Bienvenidos, Husham D, and welcome to this supplemental video tutorial on the Cisco Networking Academy Introduction to Python course for lab number 2.1.1.20. And in this lab, we're going to be taking a look at the formatting challenge with an arrow. And so let's go ahead and dive right in here. And we've got some formatting tasks that we're going to try to execute and change the size and the shape of the arrow. Uh, we're also going to get rid of some of these print statements. And I've actually staged by simply copying and pasting the exact same text three times here. And this is what it would look like if I was to run the program. We would just get these three arrows over here to the left. So let's go ahead and come back. And it says minimize the number of print function invocations inserting the backslash in sequence into the strings. And as you can see, we have eight print statements here. And so let's take a look. We've got a little more room to work with over here. It's a little easier to see what we're doing. So we're going to use the Python interactive interpreter as well as the file that we've created here to the right which is all part of the integrated development learning environment that is included when you download for free the Python distribution from python.org. So it wants us to get rid of these print statements. So what we could do is we could begin by pulling some of those print statements back as so. And basically we're gonna combine this or collapse it, if you will, into a single print statement. And it's going to be a little long. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of text here that's going to make up multiple strings inside of the same print function. And again, we've seen this before. We know that we can have more than one argument that we're providing to the print function. In fact, let me stretch this a little bit this way to see if we can't get it all on a single screen here. That way we can look at it. And we'll put a comma in here and then we'll come back over here and we'll put a comma in here. Now, we're not done. Remember, what is the default end keyword argument? It's that new line character. So we know by default, the print function includes a new line. And so we've removed all of the seven other print functions. We only have this one print function here. So let's run this. And this is not going to do what we hope it's going to do. But let's run it to see if it gives us an idea as to what we might need to do. And again, it's just about breaking the challenge down into more manageable chunks. And well, here we go. We get all of the patterns that we need. The problem is we don't have any new lines. And again, that's because we removed all of the other seven print functions. So then what would be required here? Well, all I would really need to do would be to add in that new line character. Now, could you go and drop in the end keyword argument? You might be able to, but again, it's just asking us to insert that backslash in. So I'm going to put one in that string. We're going to come over here and put one in this string. We're going to put one in that string. And we're just going to add one backslash in to the end of each of these strings. And let's make sure here I'm actually looking down each time I hit the backslash to make sure that I get it correct. And let's go ahead. We'll stretch this out a little further here to make sure that we try to keep everything in one, one print statement line. So let me double check this real quick. So there's our backslash in and there after that last asterisk that's in a given string. And you can see right there, last asterisk, last asterisk, backslash in. Same thing here. All right, so this looks good, but let's see what this looks like. Is it going to yield the arrow that we would anticipate that it's going to produce, which is this arrow right here? So let's go ahead and do F5. We'll save that file off. And there we go. And as you can see, we're off just a skosh right there. So let's come back to that first asterisk. I'm going to drop a space in there. Let's run it again. We changed it so we have to save the file. And let's see. 
and there we go. So the first arrow is all taken care of, and that is what it would look like. Remember, we added an additional, whoops, that would be two. Let me try going backwards here. It's not cooperating. We added an extra space in there. It is right there, right? We just dropped an extra space in so that it would line up the point of the arrow. All right, so that's our first challenge. Now, make the arrow twice as large. Now, this is key here, but keep the proportions. So in other words, I can't add in an additional print statement. Right, so the arrow is probably going to look a little funny. I'm sorry, let's come back over here. Probably going to look a little funny. And when you look at this, make it twice as big. Well, the question is, all right, there's three, and you can see one, one, two, three asterisks that would be here. So the width of this is a total of nine. And so the question is, are they talking about in doubling you know, the size of it from that perspective or from the base perspective, or just from the three asterisks that we have here that kind of make up this, this middle area that's inside the arrow. So let's do this. We'll take a look at a couple different ways we can do it. Let me go ahead and we'll say one, two, three. We'll add three asterisks in there. Now, I don't need to add asterisks here. I just need to bring it out three spaces. And we'll come up here. basically pushing to the right every line three spaces. Now, as you can see, this is probably going to look a little funny because we can't, we have to keep the proportion. So I couldn't add in like sort of a, a filler print statement after the first print statement to add in maybe two more asterisks to make it look a little more symmetrical. But what's, let's see what we've got here and let's say, okay. And as you can see, it does look a little off. So what could we do? We already did three. Well, could I go out and maybe do a fourth and then we would push all these out. And I would bring that into the center and that's gonna line up a little bit better because down here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got an odd number down here, meaning that I wanna make sure that I'm as close to the middle as I possibly can be so that that tip of the arrow lines up with everything else. And let's see here. And again, it looks a little odd, right? Because we've got to keep the same proportion, but have we sort of doubled the size of the arrow? So one, two, three, four, five, we've got nine arrows down here. So we could probably, and again, the larger or the wider it gets, kind of the funnier it's going to look at the top. So if I was to add in, you know, make it 11, you can see that what's going to happen here is that it's going to look, whoops, I'll pull that back just one, try to keep it in the center. There we go. So if I was to run this, the arrow now is really going to look a little silly because as you can see, it would be nice to add another line in here uh, to possibly give it a little more symmetry, but they wanted us to maintain the same proportion. So I think we would be good pulling it back. Whoops, and we didn't want to do that much. Let's see where that's going to go. And every time I hit the delete key, it's bringing it back a little too far. And this is going to be there. And then we're going to come back here. And that is, sorry about that right there and then we'll bring this one back and then if i slide that one right there so we'll go ahead and leave it right there but again it depends on how you're interpreting uh the the doubling of the size right is it from the base here is it from you know doubling the size that we have inside or from maybe the width of the widest part of the triangle but we do have a much larger triangle here and so we're going to go with that and again multiple ways that we could resolve this now it says duplicate the arrow by placing both arrows side by side now they give us this little repetition trick here with the asterisk right which is an operator and it's going to repeat the string Okay, now they don't tell you anything more than that. So let's see. And again, they're kind of hinting uh, that what they want us to do is to simply come out here and say asterisk two, and then to walk through 
and duplicate the string. Now, this is not going to do what we think it's going to do. We've got a little more work that's going to have to be done here. Asterisk 2. Trying to make sure I don't get rid of anything by mistake. And then asterisk 2. Asterisk 2. Now, this is what they hinted at. But let's see, what does that result in? And it's going to give us the second arrow to the right of the first arrow. The first arrow is going to print out beautifully. And the second arrow is going to be really sort of off center, almost like it's leaning to the right. And let's take a look here at what we get. Yeah, you can see it looks kind of like a right triangle here. And we, we know that we want to bring uh, these arrows over. We want to move some, of, I shouldn't say arrows, some of these asterisks over because we want the arrows side by side. And so when we're looking at this, we probably want this one to come over. If it's lined up here, it'd be one, two spaces. And so let's go ahead and here's how we would kind of move things around or we could try to move things around. What happens if I say one, two, right? So I, I add two spaces in here between the operator, which is the asterisk and the operand, which is just simply the number two. And we've got the string as the other operand on the other side. So let's say F5 here. Let's rerun this. And let's see, did that move the point of the arrow? It didn't move the point of the arrow. So do I need to add additional spaces before the asterisk? Let's take a look at, oops, sorry. Let's take a look at that over here. So I put two spaces in that didn't do anything. Whoops. Let's go ahead and say asterisk two. What if I put two spaces in there? Is that going to do anything to move that asterisk over? And we rerun it and we see that it doesn't. So it looks like what we're going to have to do is maybe, and let's bring that back. Oops, sorry, I didn't want to do that. So what if I was to say one, two, and put two spaces after the character that we're repeating? Because now the spaces are in here as part of the string. So let's hit F5 and see what that does. And again, just walking you through some of the things you may be thinking about, right? And there we go. So the spaces which are part of the string, when I added additional spaces in, that works. So we would want to push these guys over. And really, you can see it's, it's going to be those three there that we want to have things lined up with. So that's going to come over one, so we can work with each line here. So the second line, we can clearly see we want one space. If I hit F5, let's double check. And let's see if that kind of lines up for us out here. It does. But what's going to happen is you can see right here, that's the three asterisks from the first. So we need to be way over here. So things are going to have to move again. And so if I was to come down, here's what I mean. If I said one space there, one space there, and then I hit F5, you'll see that what's going to happen is the arrows are going to kind of move, but you can see that we're still, we're lined up properly here, but not here. So this has to come over one, right? The first uh, asterisk needs to come over one. Or I should say not the first. I'm talking about these two here. We need to move. So these guys up here are lined up. So Let's go ahead and continue on here. So you can see we added a single space in here. That really didn't do what we wanted it to do. What if I was to add in a single space there and then hit F5? What ends up happening? So yeah, it moves all of this over. So now we'd want these guys to come over one, two, three spaces. So what if I did that here at the very end? And what if I said one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I hit F5, right? Now the top again, top of the arrow is gonna be a little bit off, but you can see we're much closer now. So let's see if we can't sort this out here. So we're good right up to there. So now we gotta sort out those. So what if I add an extra space in there? We're probably gonna need one there, one there, and one there, and then hit F5. And now these spaces, right, remember, they're all part of the triangle, so we're good. So it's going to be the first three lines we need to bring over. And let's do one there, one there, and one there, and see what that results in. So now we run it again, 
and we're getting closer. So we just need an extra space for that one and an extra space for that one. And let's see what it ends up printing now. And there we go. We've got the two arrows side by side. We have everything that we need for lab 2.1.1.20. Again, a little interpretation here as to don't change the proportions of it. So I'm assuming I can't basically come down here and drop in another print statement and then add in a couple asterisks in order to make it look a little more symmetrical and what exactly the doubling of the size would look like. And then here we are. And you can see there's some symmetry here when if I hold down, not control, but I think it's option here. If I hold that, ah, it's not option. I'm trying to remember, I can only highlight and maybe it's not going to work in here for me. So, but you can see that we've got some symmetry here to the right hand side where we just basically line everything up over here and then we do asterisk two and then that's going to give me the two arrows side by side. All right, well, there is the code. That is the solution. There's a couple things outstanding here. They wanted us to remove some quotes and look carefully at Python's response. Does the error actually indicate where things are missing? Do the same with some of the parentheses. We've actually already done this. Change print. Remember, print is case sensitive. So if I was to say, capital P, you can see that it doesn't highlight it as purple. That should be my first clue that something's going to go wrong here. When I hit F5, everything's going to be great until we get to that point, and it's going to say name error. Print is not defined because it thinks that this is a definition that we have created. It's not built in. Remember, print is a built-in function. It's included as part of the standard library with the Python distribution. However, excuse me, however, uh, you could create your own function, although not much applicability for something like that, and it might cause more confusion if you were to create your own function called print with a capital P. So again, that's our first clue that something's wrong. If we were to look at removing a, a, a quotation mark, if I did that, we know that we're going to see an issue here. But let's see, and again, here it just says end of line while scanning string literal. Now here, it doesn't really give us much information. It just pops up and says, hey, there's an error. But we can see from the colors that that's probably what's going to happen. And the same thing would occur if I was to remove one of the parents and hit F5. It's going to try to save it and then run. And you can see invalid syntax. So in idle, it doesn't give you that much help with the errors. Let's do this. If I was to grab all of this, and then come out here to the command line. Let's say control D and I'll just say vi test.py and we'll drop in the code here. I'll save it and I'm basically just running this inside uh, from, from secure CRT as my terminal emulator on my iMac Pro. So now if I say Python 3 and then test.py, you can see that we end up with this invalid syntax error uh, because it looks like maybe I put it back in there improperly. And I did. You can see what I did right there. I accidentally dropped it in. So we'll come down for the bonus lab, which is this right here. So we'll switch those guys out. And let me make sure that I correct that. Whoops. If I correct that right now uh, here. So we'll come back in and say quote asterisk and let's run it and make sure that it works because again we want to have a working file when we're done and there we go everything looks great there we'll come back out to secure crt rerun things and everything looks great and again you could see that the error that we got when things were wrong it gives us much more information from the cli than it did from within the integrated development learning environment all right well there is your solution set for lab 2.1.20.2. All right, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and I will see you in another Python video soon. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.